tonyfrunkersatcomeback.com. Now today's video, at this point when I'm shooting it, might be a very long video or it might be a very short video. I don't know. And why is that? Well, today I'm going to be looking at these. These are what I think, all of them, yes, you're guessing it already just by looking at them, type zeros. And I know someone who runs another Facebook group out there, heads exploded now because I've called them type zeros. But most of these have been sent to me by a friend in Holland, so Mark Kuiper, thank you very much sir for sending them because basically he said, I tried to sell these and I couldn't. So I figured let's have a look at these, some I've had knocking around myself and see if perhaps the usual rules of what is a type zero are maybe being breached by some of these. But if you don't know what I'm on about with type zero, here is a little video that just explains it. So what do we mean by type zero? There is no official type zero designation. You know, we've got the usual type one to four tapes, but type zero is slang in our community for cassettes that really aren't even worth using because their audio quality is so bad, they can't even be classed as a type one. So we call them type zeros. There's plenty out there, but if you're looking on eBay, etc., and you're not sure what you're buying, what are the signs that the type zero? Well, the first thing is that they're usually type one only. There are some type two which are not usable, but on the whole, they're usually type one. They're usually from a brand you've never heard of. Maybe a sound alike to a known brand, you know, like KDK or, you know, we've got the Maxwells. I mean, I've tested a Maxwell, which isn't a type zero, but there are some which definitely are. They usually have something like low noise, high output written on either the cassette itself or on the inlay that you can see. They've usually got the old compact cassette logo on them, even though most of these cassettes, you know, aren't from an era where that compact cassette logo was prevalent, they still have them on there all the same. They usually have a clear opaque case, and they're usually wrapped in clear cellophane like a pack of fags, or they're sold without cases and J cards all together and just come in a plastic bag, you know, like Sertrons, three in a bag, you know, one ninety nine special offer. That's usually a good sign. The usually made in Hong Kong or China, you see cassettes with made in Hong Kong China on it, chances are it's going to be a type zero. They always have a cheap shell, usually with a paper label on it. You never get them with clear shells and, you know, stuck uh, stickers to put on afterwards. They're usually always cheap shell, paper label, and usually the J-Car's pretty rough on the inside as well. They always usually have a solid coloured lead, it's either red, blue, but a lot of them are just plain clear leaders, but they don't really have anything that signifies any sort of branding whatsoever on them. And most of them have dull brown tape that like, has a consistency of fine grit sandpaper. Some are shinier, some are darker, which could be re-slip video cassette stuff. But when you look at the tape, you don't look at it and think, oh, that looks like a TDKAR, that does. No. They, they look dull and cheap and dodgy. And not always, a lot of them mimic the design of a well-known cassette. I've got a few which sort of look like TDKs, sort of looks like Max L's. You know, if you're finding that manufacturers are trying to mimic the look of a well-known cassette, you know they're doing that because they don't think the cassette itself is good enough to stand on its own two feet. Maxim, not Max L. Maxim, I mean, to be fair, Maxim have made low quality electrical bits and bobs for as long as I can remember. Usually only found them on market stalls, but here we go. This is an LN, not a Max LN, it's a Maxim LN. Look, low noise, high output, it's an old position. Like I said, it's got the usual shell, which is black on the back, so you can't actually see how crap the cassette looks like inside. And it's shrink wrapped like a packet of fags, you know, with a little pull tear. There we go. So let's open that up. Flimsy, let's have a look. Yes, yes, there we go. We have the compact cassette logo on there. 
it's a black cheap shell with paper labels on it clear leader on this one to be fair tape let's have a look uh, yeah it's pretty dull it's not very well calendar. do you know what this tape looks like if I'm being cruel it looks a bit like the next 456 feral master with the bad calendar and you can see the lines on it so what do we think type 0 or is this going to be type 1 I'm gonna I'm gonna put this I'm gonna create a couple of piles while we do this just bear with me I'm gonna put this one in the type 0 pile now this one, Takedo, is actually very pretty looking and it says chromed outside super, high bias. Hmm, never heard of this, but let's have a look. This this isn't living with the type zero sort of rules because um, for a start you can see the cassette. It's not seeing low noise, high output on it. It's got some, uh, some stuff at the back, you know. It says West Germany on it, that's a good thing. So I'm thinking maybe this one, let's, let's have a smell, let's have a smell. No, that doesn't smell like a pure chrome. Let's uh, let's fast forward this on a bit, let's have a look. It's got a strange leader, it's like a blue and white stripy leader. The tape itself is very black, like possibly pure chrome should be but it definitely doesn't smell like a pure chrome so is this going to be a type zero is it going to be the same sort of tape inside this that i sometimes find in stuff like ufo ucds which i can't bias anywhere mm, i don't know let's give it the benefit of the doubt because it looks nice and it's not doing to the rules we'll put that in the possibly not type zero pile here's another takedo ferro low noise oh no low noise nip 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 Okay, gamma ferric oxide. Mm, gamma, that sort of reminds me of what uh, Sony used to put on the HF. So, again, it's a West German cassette. Let's open it up. I think it's going to look basically the same as the Type 2, but in a but with a different uh, different sticker on it. Let's have a look. Yeah, this feels pretty flimsy. Clear header. Let's have a look at the tape in that one. Yeah, this tape doesn't look that bad to be honest it's darker than the normal it's it's quite dark um for all we know i mean a, a lot of these cheaper cassettes uh some people have said that they've got reslip video cassette tape in there so who knows but that looks pretty dark for a type one i'm gonna put both these takedos in the might be usable unlike this one oh dear Yoko, mm. oh no, hey, get it, Yoko, oh no, never mind. Yeah, compact cassette logo. Mm, not a lot said on the back there. Again, fag packet type, uh, fag packet type, clear tear off. Let's have a look at these. No, the different designs of. Uh, so let's have a look, yeah, let's have a look. Ooh, there we go. Ooh, this looks a nasty, nasty shell, this does. Clear leader again. Let's have a listen to how smooth it winds. Turn out this is a pretty rough winder anyway, this one, but uh mm. Oh yeah, that's 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 pretty dull. That's pretty dull, that is, that's pretty brown and dull. Uh, there's no compact cassette, oh yeah, yeah, sorry, there's no compact cassette logo on the actual cassette, but yeah, I'm, I'm not thinking this is going to be up to much. Let's try something, let's try a, a Sonya cassette, not a, not a Sony, not a Sony, no, 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 but back to the rules I've seen before. A Sonya, fully warranted. No oh, low noise, high output. There's no compact cassette logo again, a tear strip, clear shell. Ooh, yeah, this 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 looks almost as nasty as that Yoko. Please, you know, they're probably these have probably come 
from the same place. The shells look very similar and nasty and uh, this has a clear leader like this one did. I think this has a clear leader, let's just double check. Wrong way, let's try winding it the right way. No. Yeah. Same, diff different, different pads but same sort of crap leader, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm not holding out a lot of hope for the older Sony, I mean Sonya cassette here of, of being of any sort of quality. Let's start, let's with being consistent. Let's just have a look at the tape in this one, shall we? Oh, this doesn't want to wind. Oh, yeah, that's very light brown. But, to be fair, it's very light brown, but that is kind of shiny, that tape. That's, it might not be the world's best ferret, but... That's shiny, that's calendared nicely. Let's, uh, yeah, let's say this one might be usable. Right, Pyrrol. Now, I've, I've used Pyrrol before. Um, I've got some of the type, type 3s, the uh, Super Ferrites, but this Sprint 90 don't know. Let's have a look. Again, this is clear, but it's it's not saying it's not giving out the vibes it's not saying any there's no compact cassette logo there's no high noise and it's made in england that's not always a good sign now again this oh look at this shell this shell looks very similar to the sonya yeah very similar shells this that's got yeah red leader very similar looking shells to the sonya let's see if the actual uh tip itself looks any better. Ooh, again, it's an LN, not a Max LN, but a Pyrrol LN. Ooh, that's stiff. This isn't even turning. It, it, ooh, it's like it's seized up. Doesn't even want to turn in the old wind of this. Let's see. I can't, ooh, I can't get this to turn at all. It's like this is stuck, really stuck. It's like the tape's disconnected, either that, it's got the longest leader I've ever seen in my life, but I think this one is, uh... oh, there we go, let's try again. No, this is, this is really, I don't even think this tape pack is loose at all, because it's just, this works, just this ain't spinning it at all, ugh, no. See, Farrah might be good, but I think this is going to be lucky if it works at all, so that's definitely going in the Type 0 pile. High tech, high energy, quality assured. Avoid touching the tapes, you may cause dropouts. I don't think touching the tapes is going to give this any dropouts it doesn't already have personally, but uh, let's tear this one open and have a look at the wonderfulness that is inside this. I mean, ooh, what's happened there? That's sealed. Ooh, look at that, it's like... Like, ooh, oh, I, ooh, someone at the factory was maybe having a really happy day when, when, when they were packaging this up. Ugh, I, I wouldn't like to think of that one, that is. Um, yeah, crappy looking shell. Clear leader, C90. Let's have a look, see what the tail looks like in this. Oh, yeah, that's dull. Yeah, that's really, really dull. Yeah, that's, that's proper dull, that is. That's got to be a Type 0, even though it's not a Doom. Oh, yeah, sorry, it's got the compact cassette logo on it. Ha, <laughs> there we go. Even though these, I remember seeing these on, on markets in the ninety, in the 90s. But, oh, what's on the front of that? I need to disinfect my hands after that. Right, let's have a look. Inkers. Low noise, high output. Mmm, manufactured in China. Oh dear, it's not looking good for the Incas. Because it's stuck to the, making the chocolate and the tobacco, not, not, not cassettes. Yeah, so I think we've seen this shell a few times. High output, there's no compact cassette on there. Oh, that, that's a, that's a big, it's a big pad, that one. Uh, not a clear leader, let's, let's have a look. Oh yeah, oh yeah, that's that's going to be the worst looking yet. It's sort of off brown, but it's liney, it's not very well calendared. Now this is going to be a type zero, I'm pretty sure. 
Leader with a knockoff BASF sort of type logo. Ultra Ferric Oxide minus one. There we go. This isn't a type zero. This is a type minus one. So this is going to be really bad. Let's have a look. Uh, five year replacement guarantee. Yeah. And I'm betting you, if you look inside this, there will be nowhere that you can actually write to to use this five year guarantee. I mean, there's no address inside this, is there? Let's have a look. Oh, hang on, hang on, hang on. I could, hang on, I could show up it. Oh, hang on. Right. Wholesale distributors of recording tapes since 1964. So this must have been made for this leader company. Um, okay, so that's something. And there's actually this as well. Getting the best from your cassettes before recording, troubleshooting. Okay, right, well... Um, yeah, it still doesn't give you an address of where to send this back. But, putting something like that in, and this in, says that they actually did maybe care about this cassette. So, the shell does seem like a Type Zero shell, but it's uh, Dolby DBX. Let's clearly, let's have a look at the tape itself. Um, it's not very well calendared, it's, it's, it's kind of dull. I reckon they really wanted this to be a good cassette, you know, it seemed like they were a cassette wholesaler, they wanted their own brand of cassettes, so they got this made. It doesn't say where it's made, uh, I'm sure they didn't intend them to be rubbish. Um, let's give this the benefit of the doubt, this one, this one might be usable, maybe Leader put some thought into it. Right, tack, hmm. Not TDK, tack, super low noise, compact cassette logo, yeah, it doesn't say where it's made. Ah, that's a surprise. Now, that's in a clear shell, it's still a clear shell with the compact cassette logo on, low noise, high output. Um, I actually really like these shells. I think I think these are quite charming when they're like this. I mean, these to me. I mean, well, well, well let's let's not age me bets yet. Let's just give it a chance. Let's have a clear leader yet. Yeah, let's have a look at the actual tape itself. No, it's another one that's stuck. There we go. Oh my, oh my dear. This, I mean, the light's reflecting on it, so it's making it look shiny, but this, this does look like fine grit sandpaper with little blobs on it. Yeah, I'm, I'm not expecting anything of this. But to be fair, this is exactly the kind of tape, and I'll tell you a little story, maybe I've told it before, I don't know, I've done so many videos now. But, um... This is the kind of tape I like to transplant decent tape in and then give it to somebody and they pick it up and go, oh, what's this crap? And they play it. It's like, oh my God, that sounds amazing because I've put like AD tape in it or something. That, I like this type of shell for that. It looks very retro cool. But I'm pretty sure this is going to be type zero. And now ITN again trying to do the TDK logo. In England, ITN is actually, it stands for Independent Television News. They do the, they've been doing the news for many, many uh, decades on um, stuff like ITV and Channel 4 in the UK. But uh, this is an international cassette. Again, it's hi-fi, it's low noise. It's got the compact cassette logo, compact cassette logo. Let's have a look at this. I'm thinking, you think maybe a black, a black shell uh, with... No, oh, this you see, this one doesn't even have a, a tear off strip on it. You know, they're, they're really not engaging with me properly. ITN here, oh, right. This is this. Oh, there we go. I thought it was that unbreakable plastic, right? Okay, I'm thinking it's gonna be a black shell on this with a white with paper label. Yeah, black shell doesn't look too bad for, for this type of cassette, but again, clear leader. Um, yeah, let's have a look at the tape. doesn't have the lines on it. It is fairly shiny. It's fairly calendared. Now, I've heard these are terrible, but I don't know. I think this one may be 
let's put it in that pile. So I'm thinking this pile here are all definitely going to be type 0. This pile, maybe some are going to be usable. I mean, when I say usable, I don't think any of these here are going to show a TDKFE, a clean pair of heels, but they might be usable and not totally useless, and maybe time has been cruel to them. But there's, there's only one way to find out. So this is how I propose to see if I've edged my bets properly. And this is why maybe this will be a long video or a short video. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take my Denon DRM44HX. Now, it's not that I dislike that deck or anything, but there's two things about it. One is that I don't use it much anymore because I just don't. I mean, I know it sounds snobbish and I said I don't want to be a, a tape snob or anything, but the, the bottom line is when you've got a perfectly working Revox B215 and Dragon there, you're not likely to record really for yourself on other decks. Um, so if the sandpaper, I don't think they will. I mean, you know, people talk about deck headwear and these are where you, your head's out. Maybe it'll, it'll take a long, long time to do. Not, not for the 30 seconds that I'm going to be trying these and it's not going to wear them out. But there's a little voice in the back of your head saying, yeah, you don't do that on your Revox. So I'm going to use it for that because I don't use the deck very often. And secondly, because it has a, a, an EQ feature, which is like, a, you know, dialing it in an auto bias. It's not bias, but it actually EQs it so that it matches the source. And whenever I've used it, the source always sounds very close uh, to what's been on the tape. So, and it does it nice and fast, unlike the Revox. So basically, I'm going to put them in. And the rules are, I put it in and the Denon can actually lock onto it, i.e. when it's been done it actually says, um, doesn't say reference on the display. Reference means it cannot dial it in and it's using reference settings, i.e. what the deck's set up for for each tape. If it does that, it's classed as a Type 0 in my book and it doesn't get recorded on. If it does manage to lock onto it, then we'll record onto it and see how close it is to the source. So like I say, if all of these go in and none of them can be locked on by the Denon, it's been a short video really that's not really proven anything apart from stuff like this is crap. But if it locks onto some, we'll have a listen. And who knows, there actually might be some little gems here. I mean, I doubt it, but, but there might be. Okay, let's give it a do. The Okay, so this is the victim, I mean, deck that I'm going to be using for this today. My little Denon DR44HX, sorry, DRM44HX. Now, I just want to show you this little bit here, where it says auto-tuning, and currently it says reference. What that means is, at that point, it's using the defaults which the deck's calibrated for. If I press this start button, and after it does it, it comes up here in red and says memory. It means it's actually managed to lock onto the cassette, supposedly. And we'll have a listen to how it manages. So I'm going to start off with what I think are going to be the Type 0 pile. So let's try this one first. The TAC TC60. Place your bets. Place your bets, ladies and gentlemen. Type 0. Or type one. Let's go. Oh, it says memory. So let's have a listen to what it sounds like. Now for the source today, I'm using a song called Silence by someone called King Khan. And it's got vocals in it. So let's start this tape off. I'm going to play the source and then we'll switch over to the tape. So bear with me. Right. It is now going. Right, start recording it. So we're peaking now on the source at around... What is it? Zero. I'm using track 28, I'm using the completely wrong track. Let's try that again. There we go, that's better. Feel it daylight 
on our skin. We are young. We right, let's switch everything. over and see what it sounds it's like on the tape. To begin. Hear the words we were meant to yeah, that's not exactly dialed it in, has it? The levels are massively down. Oh dear, no, that's not working. Let's, I tell you what, let's crank it up and see. Oh, Dropout City. Okay, I think we've heard enough of that one. So, uh, yeah, the, the, the tack looks like a retro cool cassette. It managed to dial it in, but no, it, it really didn't. And I'm starting to think now that maybe this was a wrong deck choice because in reality that was nowhere near what it should have been. So mm, let's let's try another one. The Incas. It dials this one in as well and it's rubbish and we're in for a long video. Yes, it's dialed this one in. Okay, let's try the, go back to the source again. Let's see if the Incas can dial, do anything. Right, we'll switch over now. Yeah. Crank this one up. To begin, uh. hear the words we were meant to sing. Close my eyes. Yep, that's enough of the Incas. So it's, it's upsetting me actually that the deck is actually saying you can dial it in when it really can't. I tell you what, let's, let's go over to something that I thought might work all right. Let's, let's try this Takedo. Sorry, Takedo. Um, Chrome dioxide super, which doesn't smell like a chrome dioxide. It does pick it up as a CRO2. Let's see if it can dial it in. Yes, it can. Okay, so source again. Let's see how the Takedo does. Again, massively down. Ooh, I know you shouldn't take a chrome over that, but we can break this no. No distortion, dropouts, no, that's not really a cassette that I would be interested in recording anything useful on to. Uh, let's try this other Takedo now, let me just pause the source, I know I'm to shuffle about a bit here. Let's try this one, and this was all which had very black taping for type 1. Let's see if maybe... Well, it's locked on to all of them. I'm getting a bit disillusioned with this deck now. So, source again. Ready, switch it up to the tape. Oh, that's, oh, that's disastrous. I had cleaned the heads beforehand. I can see. Oh, that's horrible. That's that's terrible. That's just ugh, that's horrific. I tell you what, just just as a, I'm going to put this tape in, which looks like a Type Zero, but it isn't. Let me just put this tape in with me, just as a control, just to see whether this deck actually has got all the heads caked and crap now that I need to clean it off, or or if it's just generally just record everything badly right let's let's take the source down now okay let's record onto this no this is low
Yeah, this actually does sound listenable, unlike the other tapes, so... Yeah, so that, that does sound listenable, I mean that's... Okay, so... See, going through this dirge, the ITN. Place your bets, I'm reckoning it's going to probably lock onto it. And then it's going to sound like crap, so let's bias that one up. Incidentally, I cleaned the, the pinch rollers and the heads before I did this, and I'm going to uh, clean them again afterwards and see how dirty they are and show you. Okay, so back to the source, put it back at four. Okay. And the song just finished. Ha ha ha, let's run it again. Okay, let's see how good it picks up this delicate intro. Ugh. Let's crank it up. Ugh. Yeah, that's that's not going anywhere. That's not going to suddenly blow my socks off, is it? That's another one. Right, let's try this interesting one. The leader. Let's see if this... I mean, the, the case is nice from this, to be fair. It's a, it's a nicer case. Let's see if this one from the distributors can do a better job than all these other Type Zeros. Because, yeah, so far, none of them have been anywhere near close to something I would actually use. Okay. Put it back down to four. Here's the source. Let's record the tape. Oh, it's doing better so far. Let's crank it up a bit. I don't want to compare it to the source because if I do this, it's going to blast your ears out. Ready? You see, it's plus five, but... Well, it's better than the others, but uh, it wouldn't worry, wouldn't worry a day, that wouldn't. But then again, 70s, put it in your boombox, or your shoebox recorder, who really knows? Oh dear, we're getting towards the bottom now, the, uh, the Sonya cassette. Let's have a see what the sun you can do. Oh, it's finding all of them now. Right, back to the source. Chief, I started to believe that tonight it was meant to be. Garbage! You now the, uh, the high tech with the very dodgy looking stain on it. Okay, sauce comes again. Turn it down a bit, sorry. Right. No more fear of hiding. Stay where we are. Yeah. We can break the silence. Oh dear, oh dear. Bye. Right. Let's uh now this pyro, which I couldn't even get to fast forward, which may be all broken and stuck together. Let's have a look. Oh no, it can do it here, right? Okay, back to the source. Now the pyro. It's down on the sauce, but um, 
We're a bit like the leader one, it's it's no TDKD, but it seems usable, that one. Right, we're down to the last two. The barrel is being scraped. The Maxim. Well, so far this is locked onto all of them, even though it's done a crap job on all of them, so I'm not sure about this auto-tuning on this deck anymore. It's made me out to be a fool, but back to the source. Oh, a different one. Let's try a different one. And get ready for the maximum wonderfulness now. Oof. To begin, hear the words we were meant to sing. Close my eyes, I feel where we are. Um, where we are. Let's wait till the, we the bass and the drums kick in, but it's not as horrific as it should be. Yeah, but let's be honest here, it's still crap. We, we ain't doing that. And now the last one, the Yoko, which could be also called the Joko, probably, judging by how I think it's going to actually run. Oh, this one won't even fast forward. Oh, look, look at that. I just put it in and it's it's all twisted. Yeah. Look at that, it twisted in the deck. Let's just give it another chance. No. That one's so crap that... Oh, look at that. Look at what it's done there. Right. Okay, let's just... Uh, bear with me for one second, Mentor. Let's, let's put a reference tape in it. An absolutely terrible tape. Um, a Fuji FR1 Super, which is sublime, sorry. Let's just... Uh, just as reference, because you never know. The heads might be all caked and crap right now, and that's skewing it. But let's put this in. What is this? It won't auto tune it. Oh, that's done. <laughs> right, let's go back to the source. Let's record onto this and see how it does. In the distance, I can see all the things that we can achieve. I started, yeah. I mean, to the auto tuning doesn't seem to do too great either. That or the heads are all kicked, but at least, at least that one, you know, just to show the point that this one did actually sound usable. So the deck isn't completely shot, but it probably needs a damn good clean, which I'm going to do now. There's the old saying, you pays your money, you makes your choice. And, I don't know, I mean, let's be honest, none of these would give a TDKD or a Max How You Are anything to worry about. Out of the lot, I'd say this Pyrrol and this Leader were probably the closest to being a usable tape. Who knows, maybe the years of storage and the rage have, you know, made them deteriorate from what they were originally. I mean, you know, Pyro, Ron Poulenc, you know, this is, you can taste the heritage, sorry, trace the heritage of this to modern day Mulan who made the RTM Fox, you know. Um, this leader, you know, with a little card inside, they really wanted to try and tell something decent. So maybe, like I say, these were okay 35, 40 years ago, but not so much now. But these are the nearest we got. These Takedo, ugh, absolute garbage. That is one of the worst cassettes I've ever heard. I mean, it's a shame because they look, like I say, really retro cool, but that is a really bad cassette. I, like I say, with that dark tape, oh, look, it's, it ribbed. It actually ribbed that tape while it was in the player. Hmm. I don't think it's the deck. I mean, everything else has been okay. That one's all right. I mean... We played this leader after we played that Takeda. Has that been ribbed? No, that's not been ribbed. So, yeah, I mean, that one's deteriorated and it sounded terrible. And 
But that's the thing, I mean, people collect these, and I understand why they collect them, because in their own crappy way, they are sort of endearing. I mean, you know, look at this tack, I mean, it looks like nothing else. It's a little time capsule. Time capsule, maybe that's what it means, I don't know. You know, and, and the tape itself, like I say, kind of endearing looking, swap the tape for something decent, and it's, it's a nice novelty tape. So part of me gets why people collect these. But then part of me gets angry saying, yeah, it's because of crap like this that people think cassettes are crap. They bought crap like this thinking it's all universal. They listened to them, recorded them on crap cassette recorders and went, these are crap, I hate cassettes, cassettes are crap. You know, so part of me, you know, I mean, let's be honest, nobody who, man maybe, uh, maybe them two are the exception there, but nobody who manufactured any of these and tested them said, oh, this is a decent product, this, this is good. They all went, meh, once they've bought it, they're hardly going to come back for a refund, are they? Cynical cash-ins to popularise, and like I say, I mean, when we were young, and you know, I didn't have pots of money when I was young, and I ended up buying some of these, and mostly, the only thing I ever recorded on this type of cassette was computer games, because they just basically have very high-pitched sine waves, which, which you know, don't really need a good cassette. In fact, good cassettes and good decks don't record computer tapes very well. You needed a mono boombox or a shoebox, and one of these, and the volume cranked way up, and it would record the sine waves fine, but I never after trying once, never bought these for music again, because the, even on my boom boxes, these sounded crap. So there we go, type zeros, sort of an idea of what to look out for, and a very graphic demonstration of how bad they really do sound. And that's why I don't class them as type ones. So thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Don't forget Sunday, the Retro Nouveau, it's live UK time, 12 till 2, Falcos Radio Org. And I'd like to say thanks to all of you. If you've not checked over at the community part, I'm posting little bits in the community part of the um, of the YouTube channel as well, just bits and bobs about what I'm finding and all that. But thank you very much to those of you who are going on to Mixcloud and actually listening to the Retro Nouveau. It means a lot to me because it helps the actual show shoot up the global pop ratings. I mean, it hits in the 50s now, which is brilliant. So I want to thank you very, very much for just taking the time to listen to the show. So other than that, happy taping. And I'll see you on the next video. Bye-bye.